More than 100 years before the Great Fire of London destroyed the original St. Paul's Cathedral and the Black Death ravaged the city, a man known as Henry VIII sits on the throne in England. The year is 1534 and Henry has just convinced Parliament to make him the head of the Church of England and severed ties with the Catholic Church in Rome. Henry's motivations for breaking from the Catholic Church were political, but his son Edward VI, who would inherit the throne after his death in 1547, would transition the Church of England towards Protestant beliefs. Edward would die young, and with no direct heir, Mary I, a devout Catholic, would gain the throne. Mary did everything she could to overturn the change that had occurred under Henry and Edward. She is often referred to as Bloody Mary in reference to the Protestants she put to death. The saga continues on when Mary dies and Elizabeth I takes her place on the throne. Elizabeth would revert England back once again to a Protestant church under the Elizabethan settlement. Thirty years later, John Tillotson would be born into the era immediately following this period of religious turmoil. John Tillotson was born in a small English village called Sowerby in Yorkshire during the year 1630. His father was a Puritan clothier, but this impact on Tillotson is not historically documented. The next commonly acknowledged event in Tillotson's life were his studies at Clare Hall, Cambridge, where he would become a fellow and graduate in 1651. Tillotson was ordained into the Church of England in 1661. He began preaching at both Lincoln's Inn and St. Lawrence Jewelry in London during 1664. That same year, he would marry Elizabeth France, the niece of Oliver Cromwell and St. Lawrence Jewelry. It was at this time that Tillotson attended the Savory Conference, a conference that aimed to promote unity and discussion about the Church of England. In 1662, the Act of Uniformity was passed by Parliament, requiring the Church of England to become unified under common religious beliefs. Tillotson would adhere to this act, although he had previously been considered a nonconformist. Tillotson, known for his zealous attitude against Catholic doctrine, began publishing writings against the Catholic works of Rome. This, matched with his notable preaching and connections within the Church of England, allowed him to advance the position of the Dean of Canterbury in 1672 by the order of King Charles II. During his time as Dean, John Tillotson would continue to publish works refuting Catholic doctrine, including A Discourse Against Transubstantiation, which will be later analyzed in this video. Tillotson would also gain the favor of the new English monarchs William III and Mary II. This newfound favor would allow Tillotson to advance his religious career even further. In 1689, John Tillotson would become the Dean of St. Paul's in London. The original St. Paul's had been destroyed in the Great Fire of 1666, and the new cathedral would not be finished until after Tillotson's death. Two years later, in 1691, Tillotson would continue his rise to the highest position in the clergy of the Church of England, Archbishop of Canterbury. He would remain in this position for just three years until he died unexpectedly in 1694. His funeral was held in London at St. Lawrence Jewelry, where it was remarked by William III that Tillotson had the brightest thoughts and the most correct style of all our divines, and was esteemed the best preacher of his age. He is now buried in St. Lawrence Jewelry. In order to understand John Tillotson's A Discourse Against Transubstantiation, it is important to define what transubstantiation is and why it was a hotly debated topic during the Reformation. In the Catholic Sacrament of Communion, transubstantiation is the belief that when a priest blesses bread and wine, that it becomes the body and blood of Jesus with only the physical appearance of wine and bread left. Protestants rejected this idea of transubstantiation during the Reformation as a creation of the Catholic Church and not from God. On the first page, Tillotson states his thesis writing, of the first of these, I shall now treat an endeavor to shew against the Church of Rome that in this sacrament there is no substantial change made of elements of bread and wine into the natural body and blood of Christ. That body that was born of the Virgin Mary and suffered upon the cross, for they so explain the hard word transubstantiation. This work is also littered with Tilton's remarks about the Catholic Church that show that an intellectual tension 
still exists between the churches years after the English Reformation. Tillotson goes on to explain in his work that no one should have to write about why a commonly accepted thing is not something else. But this, claims Tillotson, is exactly what he needed to do to refute his wrong Catholic adversaries. Tillotson also says that sacraments with no backing in scripture weaken Christian arguments and promote atheism. Tillotson's work relies heavily on logic which fits the early Enlightenment era Tillotson lived in. On the last pages of his 43-page work, Tillotson turns his attention from transubstantiation to other topics that were debated during the Reformation, including idolatry and papal authority. This once again shows that the Reformation's tension still continued well into Tillotson's life in the 17th century, and was a topic Tillotson dealt with often in a role as a clergyman of the Church of England. Although it had been over a hundred years since Henry VIII had begun the Reformation, the same disputes raged on in Tillotson's life. 